As some of you may know, or if you are new here, you may not know, I am on this like concealer or let's call it an under eye journey this year, okay? So I have very, very, very difficult under eyes, you guys. I'm not even exaggerating. They have incredible darkness. I've got pigmentation around here. They're wrinkled, they're textured, and they are dry, dry. So finding kind of a concealer or an under eye powder or an under eye routine that actually does the job for me is been very, very difficult. And yes, I've got concealers and stuff and like routines, etc., in my collection that come pretty close. But this year I've decided that I'm going to find the thing, the thing, whether it is a technique, a powder, a concealer, whatever it is, an eye cream, whatever it is, I'm going to find it that make my under eyes like actually look good. So essentially today what I'm doing is I am going to give you guys my thoughts and reviews on all of the new concealers, powders or color correctors that I have bought into my collection since the 1st of January. What I think of them, have I found the one, have I found one that's better than what I've already got, you know, that what do I recommend, what do I not recommend, etc. that kind of a thing. So that's what we're going to do today. I do have like a My Concealer Journey playlist as well, so it'll be up in the eye somewhere, on the channel, etc. I'll try and remember to link it in the description box. All of the concealers, etc. that I'm talking about and powders, you know, all of those things, they'll be linked in the description box down below for you as well if you're interested. And I'm going to do it on like the desk format. So you're not going to see this anymore, you're going to see the desk. So let's go ahead and get started. But you know, before we do, let's do the YouTube things. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I've been filming all day. Okay, you girls got a batch film. I'm going loopy. So hang in there. Let's get started. So these are all of the color correctors, powders, concealers, etc. that I have purchased since the 1st of January so far this year that I've been testing over the last couple of months. Most of these honestly were purchased in January. So I have been testing these for quite some time and kind of know how I feel about them, etc. So let's go ahead and get into all of these. I'm going to start with the color correctors. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Vanish color corrector. This is in the shade Fair. So it is like a peachy kind of color corrector designed for fair skin tones, obviously. And this particular product, a lot of you actually recommended this product to me. Now, I do need to preface this with this particular product is really, really a lovely finish on the under eyes. So if you are looking for a lightweight color corrector, doesn't settle in fine lines, um, doesn't kind of make your concealer or your under eyes like sit funny or look funny or add too much of a kind of disrupting texture, let's say, to it. Doesn't feel heavy, all those kinds of things. And this is a really, really beautiful color corrector for you. This isn't the holy grail color corrector for me. I don't find it actually really does too much for me if I'm completely honest, which is unfortunate because I really did want to like it. And it's not that I don't like it because I do. I just don't find that this particular tone of color corrector actually does much for my under eyes in terms of kind of brightening the darkness or hiding the darkness. However, I will say based on finish alone on my under eyes, I really do like it. So if you're someone that knows that this particular tone of color corrector like works really well for you, then I highly recommend this product. Next up, we have the NYX Cosmetics Color Correcting Palette. Now I actually picked this up because one of you guys suggested that I try a lavender color corrector. And this was the only lavender color corrector I could find like at my local shopping center. So I picked this palette up. I actually love this entire palette, you guys. I think I picked it up for like $12 because it was like half price. And it's brilliant. I love it. Now, I think lavender probably does work nearly the best for my under eyes in color correcting, to be honest with you. However, the other really good thing about this palette is that I've actually just been like experimenting with like all of these colors and like mixing them together and mixing the shades together to kind of see what works best for me. So I actually really recommend this color correcting palette. I also really like the finish on the under eyes. It's not too heavy. It doesn't settle like in fine lines or like make them greasy or make my under eyes look cakey or anything like that. It's really long wearing. Uh, it doesn't really change the formula of the concealers over the top of it, etc. So I actually really, really, really recommend this NYX color correcting palette. Truly, I think it is brilliant. I'm so happy I have it. So let's actually do powders that I've been trying next because 
I only have three of these as well. Now, the first one is the Laura Mercier Secret Blurring Powder. This is in the shade one. And I actually used this, you guys would have seen in my Laura Mercier kind of concealer first impressions video where I tried this, the Secret Concealer and the Flawless Fusion Concealer all together to kind of see how they would go. This powder in that video, I did quite like. However, every single time I've tried this powder after this that video, I have absolutely hated it. And I really do not like this powder, you guys. It does not look good. One, it is so hardly like or tightly packed in this uh, compact that it's quite hard to get off. Two, it's quite, um, it almost feels slightly oily or greasy. That could just be me maybe, but like it just, it goes on the under eyes quite nicely. But after about like five or 10 minutes, it starts to like break up the concealer that I put on my under eye. It fades away so quickly, no matter how much I put on, it creates no longevity for my concealer to sit on my under eyes at all, which for someone who has like wrinkles and is, and is quite expressive, I need my under eye powder to really set my concealer in. And it just kind of makes me look a little bit haggard within five to 10 minutes. So yeah, I, I don't recommend this. I really don't recommend this in any way, shape or form. This one, on the other hand, I have all of the wonderful things to say about it. So this is the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder in shade one. Can't recommend this enough. Can't recommend this enough. I Since the day that I purchased this, I have not used any other under eye powder. So normally if you've watched my videos before, you know that I use my Pat McGrath under eye blurring powder. I haven't even used that once since I picked this up. This is amazing. This is basically a loose powder version of the Pat McGrath under eye powder. And they actually, you would think you would get more product in this. You, this, I looked and you actually get the same amount of product in both. So you could probably like, I'm not going to say they're dupes for each other though, because I do find this one slightly less mattifying. For those of you that have tried the Pat McGrath under eye blurring powder before, you know that it is very, very mattifying and quite, it's just almost on the verge of being drying. Whereas I find this one a little bit more hydrating and kind of just an ever so soft glow to it. So I think that's what I like about this more. I also kind of like that it's a loose powder because I can kind of control how much product I'm using a little bit more and like put it in the cap here and kind of swirl my brush in and like really work it in. Or I can like almost kind of like pack this on with a sponge if I want to. So I, I don't know. I mean, you can do that with a pat one as well, but yeah, I have really, really enjoyed this powder. And I don't think that it like creates longevity in my concealer. It really sets it in. It doesn't emphasize the texture or the fine lines or anything. Like I really do like this powder. The other powder that I picked up, which might seem really random is the one size compact foundation. And I did that because I thought maybe I, it would add like some coverage that I was looking for to setting my under eye. And I know that a couple of people were actually recommending setting their under eyes with this kind of powder when I was like reading around different blogs and articles, etc. So I picked this up, but to be honest, I don't like this. <laughs> it's not that I don't like it. It's just, it's not as good as I thought it would be. I think that my MAC Studio Fix powder foundation is way nicer on my face. It's more smoothing. It has more coverage. It's more long lasting than this one. This one is just compared to the MAC Studio Fix powder foundation. I don't like this and don't recommend. Okay. So that's all the powders and color correctors. Let's move on to concealers. So let's just get this one out of the way. This one is the Rimmel Kind and Free concealer. I honestly just picked this up because I was in the drugstore and it was brand new and I was just like, really, I don't know. It was on sale for like $4 and I was like, okay I'll try it like I'm curious so I don't even I've tried looking for a shade name on this concealer and I cannot find one. Oh, here we go 20 light so this is the shade 20 light it's too dark for my under eyes but that's okay I have so many brightening ones I mean it's okay it does kind of blend out quite nicely and smoothly but it's got like hardly any coverage to it at all as you can tell but it's good shade match for my hand actually um yeah it's uh I guess if you're someone that doesn't really have anything to cover up on your under eyes and you're just looking for something really light. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, for if you can get it on special, it's not bad, but I wouldn't be rushing out to purchase it. These are the Rose Ink Concealers. Now I had to purchase two of these because when you look at their shade range, I also have a re first in a first impressions review on these if you're interested. Um, it'll be in my concealer playlist, but like I had to pick up two of these because this one is in the shade LX10 and it's so light 
on my skin like look at that that's basically white but then the very next shade up which is LX20 is way too dark like the shade range on this concealer I have no idea what she was even thinking of or if her intention was to make everyone buy two concealers so that they could get their correct shade range but like in what world do you jump from that to that? Now, the reason why I tried this concealer is because everyone who had been trying it was talking about how full coverage it was, how amazing on the under eyes it was, like just all of these incredible things about these concealers that I was like, wow, this could really be the concealer for me. I just did not have that experience. And even after my first impressions, I tried so hard. I mixed this concealer with other concealers. Like I tried so often to get this concealer to work for me and my Lord, it just does not want to work for me like I can get it to a point where it's acceptable but definitely not at the point where I'm like yeah I'm raving about this concealer it's so good like it's just for some reason I find it dry on my under eyes it's drying it wears away really quickly it really doesn't have a lot of coverage I just do not think that this concealer for me and my under eyes it's just nothing special now again when I'm speaking about these you do need to keep in mind I have really 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 difficult under eyes you guys so if you're not someone that has like the level of darkness pigmentation dryness lines texture that I have like take what I'm saying then as a grain of salt because if you don't have those things then this concealer will look lovely on you I can assure you but if you are someone that has like dryness or or any of the things that I have then yes yeah, give them a miss because I just I can't find a way to make these like even where I'm like yeah these look really good you know what I mean next up is the NARS radiant creamy concealer a lot of you guys also recommended this product to me and I really like the NARS soft matte concealer so I thought I would give it a go um, again another shade range that for me and my skin tone for some reason so hard it's like the rose ink one where it's either way too light or way too dark for me so this was the best shade that i could find it is the shade madeline um but again i just find in concealers i have to continuously seem to buy two concealers to even find like a shade that like will work for me at all i think it's probably more so because i do need a more darker peachy shade mixed with a lighter shade to kind of get that color correcting as well even if i use a color corrector anyway side note i don't get the hype i don't get the hype this is not creamy on my under eyes this is not full coverage this concealer i was truly just like i don't understand what people are talking about and again it could just be because i have the most difficult under eyes but I don't get it. I don't get it. I actually find that the rose ink concealers do more for me than this concealer. I just, I do not, I barely reached for this. I kind of had to force myself to keep testing it out because it was so uneventful on my under eyes. It just did absolutely not one thing for them. It didn't cover any darkness, any pigmentation, nothing. It didn't smooth anything out. It didn't hydrate anything. It was just... I don't know. I don't get the hype. I really like the soft matte NARS concealer, but this one I'm just like, oh, I, meh, no, it's not. It's a no from me. Next up, we have the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer. This is in the shade four. Again, I found this as a recommendation from, actually it was, oh my goodness, what is her name? Oh gosh. I'm going to put the YouTuber's name on the screen right now for you, but it was her best of 2021 concealers video that I found this and she recommended this one because it was like the most full coverage concealer. Yeah, um, I don't feel that way. I don't know what my expectation is of full coverage. I, it's probably the color correcting that I need more so than the full coverage, I guess. But yeah, I mean, it is full coverage, but you have to put quite a lot on and it can kind of look a bit too heavy because it is more of a cream type consistency and a more matte type consistency. So if you put too much on, it does look really quite heavy, but you can see there that you can build it up to be quite full coverage. It's not the worst, I will say that. I actually don't mind it and I quite like mixing it with some of my more hydrating concealers to kind of get the consistency that I'm looking for. Um, but I wouldn't say that this is the one because it does tend to look a bit too heavy on my under eyes. Next up is the Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Enhancer in the shade SX05. And again, I picked this up because this is supposed to be like one of the most full coverage kind of like makeup covers. And it kind of like it's really is quite full coverage. It's not a bad shade. Um, but it is quite texture emphasizing. It's kind of like that, like, 
um, heavy, creamy type consistency where it does make your under eyes look a little bit too heavy. So you just need to use a tiny, tiny amount. Um, like I don't know, you can kind of see there like how thick and heavy it is. I even tried it as a foundation one day and it was just really too matte and heavy looking. I looked really like an old bag basically. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't go out of my way to purchase this. If you have any textures or wrinkles, I'd probably just stay away from this particular product to be honest. Or you just need to use like the lightest amount. Okay, so next up is a product that really did become a fave for me and it is the Laura Mercier Secret Concealer. So this is in the shade number one. And this is a really nice kind of concealer that does color correct and provide coverage at the same time. The only thing I don't like is it's quite hard to get it out of this pot. It's quite like firmly and tightly packed in there. So you really need to like warm it up on the back of your hand or your finger to like really kind of get it out. Um, great shade. It does kind of color correct and neutralize as I apply it. It looks super lovely on the skin. It smooths, it hydrates, it doesn't emphasize textural lines, and it really does provide quite a good level of coverage. I need to layer another kind of concealer over the top of it, but it's really quite nice. And it's kind of got this sticky feeling to it. So like the tackiness allows the, the concealer that you layer on top of it to really like grip to it and kind of last longer. So yeah, I actually, this was such a good kind of find. Second to last is the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Concealer. This is in the shade 1N and I uh, adore this concealer. It's the concealer that I'm wearing. Actually, I wore this one and this one today with the brightening powder, if you're wondering. I love this concealer. Such a good concealer. Another one that was constantly mentioned in all of the blogs, etc., or YouTube videos about being like one of the best concealers. It really is a really nice concealer, especially if you're someone that really doesn't have terrible under eyes and you just need like you just want to conceal it to brighten or um just a little bit of coverage kind of thing you will find this concealer just like actually perfection but even for someone like me who does have those difficult under eyes like when i layer this with the secret concealer for example it's so beautiful it's so smoothing on the under eyes it's like you can really build it to be quite a full coverage it's long lasting it just looks lovely. It makes my under eyes just look smooth and healthy and I really do find that this concealer is so good and it's very very lightweight like you barely even feel like you're wearing a concealer at all. And last but not least we have the new KVD Good Apple Concealers. So we can't actually get the Good Apple Foundation in Australia. There's some ingredient in it that Australia doesn't allow but we can get the concealers so happy days. Now I got two shades because again I picked up the original shade of Light 105 which is here and it is is way too light so I went like quite a few shades up and I picked up light 111 and it is also still pretty light for my under eyes so one of you guys suggested one uh one two two so eventually I'll pick that up this is the shades right here so that is 105 and that is 111 which I know looks dark on my hand but when I put that on my under eyes it is really not anyway it's fine. Um, now this concealer itself is a brilliant concealer. Brilliant. It's one of the closest concealers I've found to like the Pat McGrath Labs Sublime Perfection Concealer. It's not exactly the same, but it's very, very similar. If you find the Pat McGrath Labs Sublime Perfection Concealer like too drying for you, cause it's not extremely hydrating that concealer. I find it more of a natural finish. So, which I quite, it, it works quite well for my under eyes, the Pat McGrath one, because it's still smoothing. But if you find it too drying, you might like that this KVD one then because this one's got quite a bit of hydration to it actually. It's really quite nice and hydrating on the under eyes. It is really easily buildable. So you can do quite a few layers of this particular concealer to build it up to be quite a solid full coverage without it looking too heavy or feeling too heavy or looking cakey. It doesn't really crease or anything like that either. This has been one of the concealers that I can't stop using, especially since I've picked it up. I really, really like it. It's also one of those concealers that mixes really well with other concealers. So if you have one that you kind of need a little bit more hydration to add to it because it's too drying or something and you don't want to like waste it then you can get this on and like mix it in and it will be like perfect but yeah i really find that these like kvd ones are a really really good purchase so that is all of my thoughts feelings emotions all of the things on all of the under eye products that i have tried so far this year uh what do you guys think let me know just let me know what you guys think i know some of you have already told me like the kvd good apple is like the holy grail for you you found you found it you found the one but let me know what you guys think down below and then also 
give me your new recommendations, okay? What should I be... What should I be trying next? I hope you enjoyed the video in some way, shape or form or found it helpful in some way, shape or form. If you're watching till this point, you know I appreciate you more than anything. Thank you so, so much. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, give it a little share. That really helps me out. Thank you so much if you do. I hope you have an amazing day wherever you are in the world and I will see you next time. Bye.